Nancy, thank you so much for coming. I learned so much. Um, what challenges did you face when creating the Susan G. Komen Foundation? Um, it's a very, very long time ago, but it seems like it was a long time ago, and it, and it was. I think, um, I think one of the biggest barriers was the, it wasn't really a refusal, the fear of the subject even being part of our public discourse. So in so many towns and cities in America, people didn't realize at the time, in Texas, where I was living, we couldn't use the word breast in uh, magazines, newspapers, TV, or radio. So how are we going to address breast cancer? And, you know, uh, it was it was kind of shocking. And so when we did our very first invitation of a Susan Coleman event, we had to put in there, you know, uh, raising funds for supportive scientists and patients who might develop or are developing breast cancer. And um, so we had to characterize it as a new organization focused on women's cancers. And it just seemed, it, see, it, it was archaic just to sit there and hear that. And I said, well, I never knew of anything that got done when people couldn't talk about it and name it properly, what it is. This isn't um, a bad information or a, a sex story or a whatever. This is about women and their lives and the, the harm this disease is doing and the number of deaths of it and the frequency of it and the ages keep getting lower and lower because we're screening more. There's, there's a, a very poor effort going on and we need to enlarge it. We need to make sure people know, know this and how dangerous this disease is. So one of your newer initiatives is the creation of the nonprofit Promise Fund of Florida. What are the goals of that organization? Well, to make sure that we can provide screening and care for 80 to 100,000 women in Palm Beach County uh, who have no steady source of primary care. So hence, uh, diseases like breast cancer can be deadly. And that's why we wanted to create a model that though none of us are physicians, but that we could uh, have a medical advisory board, that we could have a group of uh, nurses who would work with us, and physicians in our town because we only have for-profit hospitals. So it was a challenge to figure out how were we going to, where were we going to take them? And our health care district, which is a um, tax-based program that our county has, um, is supposed to be supplying funds for care, and they do, uh, surgery and things that have to be done, but it, it wasn't meant to be built in a way that it would get the uh, real increased participation by members of our community. And we wanted people to understand it was a problem. We knew it was going on. We wanted to help it do it, and that's why they needed to help us. And um, we didn't have to explain too much about what we were going to do because everyone knows it. It's the open secret that everyone knows. We have a tremendously growing population. Um, we have people from all over the world living in our state. And uh, those areas that don't have good for-profit not for profit systems have to change. We, it, we've got to have a hospital, quality hospital in our county. Um, not that our two not for profits don't do the best they can do with what they have, but it's not nearly enough what they need. We need um, passionate care. We need more grants given to whatever future hospital we could build and afford. And we just. You just know when care, we, our population is exploding. So someone has to take care of them, and it has to be us. It's neighbor to neighbor. Okay. What inspires you to continue to advocate for women? I think we need um, women to become as competent as possible. I have such faith, and I watch my women friends and how hard they work. And they don't mind doing five things at one time. They're just, women are built that way. I'm a real fan of all of my female friends who work so hard, and, and not that men don't. They have a different kind of temperament, generally. Not generalizing, but um, they weren't taught uh, about some of the things women had to do every day and the complexity of what they had to do. 
sometimes with a few children and trying to get to their job worked out and having the household run. Um, poverty is a big issue um, in Florida and in other many other states, uh, particularly those states that turned down the, the additional Medicaid. That, to me, was one of the not so pretty things that our country has done. It just doesn't work. Medicaid is a program that works, um, and we have to continue to understand health care is the most important thing that people can have. Quality of a good community, a good state, good towns, we have to take care of our people. And last question, what is your advice to women cancer surgeons who want to advocate for their patients? Yeah. It has to be a very difficult thing to do, depending on where you're living and the resources available. Obviously, it helps if you have a good university in a town where you're living with, with good programs or um, ambitious kind of programs for, uh, and, and for women and for all uh, building, these, building medical systems, uh, ecosystems in a way, of having informed uh, community an informed community population, um, activists who are building organizations to answer the problems. We're very lucky in America that we can build not-for-profit organizations. And having traveled or lived in different parts of the world, you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't be it wouldn't be legal what we're doing. Women are shoved to the background, and their job is to be at home, feeding everybody, and taking care of everybody, and working. And um, it's really important that we energize and educate people so that their lives are livable. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.